Before that, they will have to pass through industrial slaughterhouses, such as this one in Campo Grande, where 500 cows a day are slaughtered. Here, they're not aware of the fact that European cows have become carnivorous and have gone mad. The cattle that passes through these installations have not been fed with meals of animal origin, using only the richness of the Pantanal pasture for their feeding, a pasture known as capi. The variety of these cornfields is reflected in some names. Mimosinho, White Masiega, Mimosinho de Talo, Catin Guele, Abroyo Rice, Red Grass. Natural vegetables with which the Pantanal cattle has been fed to in turn feed millions of Brazilians in a wholesome manner. And more frequently, to feed other consumers from the Latin American market, the Mercosur or the European community devastated by fast food swindlers. A good steak should taste of rain or at least that's what it's owed to here in the Pantanal. Each year begins and ends with a rainy season, from October to February, unloading a daily amount of water that could supply a city of 20 million inhabitants with water for a month. As you can imagine, the biorhythms change and little or big specimens begin a new way of life nourished by a sky that gives its all. The men know it. The dry season is over. That bright time of the year where clouds disappear and the radiant sun is king. Now the time for raincoats and umbrellas has arrived. A necessary, although uncomfortable phase in the uninterrupted cycles of water. As in the Amazonia, rain is good for the Pantanal. It doesn't lose its high temperatures in spite of the storms, reaching maximums of up to 40 degrees Celsius. Heat and water a perfect formula for the explosion of animal and plant life, which we will enjoy on a sunny afternoon a few months later. Some insects are only visible during the rainy season. They live hidden beneath our feet the rest of the year. The sex termites have only a few minutes to find a partner and colonize a new piece of land to found a new nest. Nature has given them wings. Neither the soldier nor the worker termites have such a sophisticated locomotion system. They are the only ones capable of reproducing themselves while flying under the rain and among thousands of rivals. Their vital objective is complicated. They have to find other termites capable of reproduction in a terrain full of obstacles and under the bombardment of pheromones. Once located, the termite will divide the wings of its new partner and a few seconds later receive the same operation and bury itself after having been fertilized, all before the sun goes down. It's a life or death love marathon.
This is the system that termites use for dispersing their genetic patrimony and for widening their domains. Only a few couples will have succeeded in their objective in this purest example of natural selection. But they will have to do it before falling prey to their worst enemies, the ants. These have also been activated by the rainy season and show no mercy towards the newly coupled termites. The termites' honeymoon is just a nutritional snack under the rain. While this tiny tragedy goes on, man retires. While it rains outside, the kitchen becomes large and indispensable by the cook fire. Doña Seña and Beatriz, mother and daughter, they are the only women in Bahia Don Bosco. They direct this tuned orchestra where the pots and pans shine like well-tuned trombones, and where the cymbals and percussion section follow the beat. We ask them if they don't miss other melodies. Wouldn't you like to go into town to the big city? We go there to visit when the fairs come around. We go out when we can, but then we come back because our husbands live here. So we make do here. In one cattle ranch called Gaipon, and while they wait for the daily miracle that Doña Seña and her daughter produce, all the farmhands take advantage of the stormy weather to create filigrees with words and leather. It's four o'clock in the afternoon, and morale has to be lifted before eating dinner to avoid the memory of their distant families and being overcome by overwhelming melancholy so many kilometers away. Newton and Ciceron use music as a sort of group therapy and are convinced that with a little forro and la mandon, the two current raves and rhythms, they will cheer the afternoon up for their co-workers. Manesinho doesn't wait a second before he starts moving his bones. The minutes, hours, days and months pass this way, and the men born and raised in the Pantanero culture continue with high morale. Doing their job, and dreaming about the day their relief shows up. Their lives are hard and real, but other peoples inhabited the Pantanal long before the white man thought to fill it with cows and horses. These cave paintings are not catalogued. Our cameras are the first to film them. Situated on the somber foothill of Morro de Sunsas, they are only one of the many artistic manifestations of this spectacular Latin American Indian nature that was created by the human nation. Those that inhabited the Pantanal thousands of years before the European incursion of brave men began, men like Cabeza de Vaca, a Spanish traveler from the beginning of the 16th century. But what is left of the indigenous Pantaneda population? Who is on the other side of the modern-day white society? We have not wanted to say farewell to the Pantanal without checking the indigenous nature of this ancient paradise.
We have navigated down just a small part of the 5,000 kilometers through which a boat can easily travel here to find the last living Indian. We have heard of him. His name is Viridiano, and he survives, in spite of his advanced age, hunting jacarés and capybaras. He's alone. His brother, a single man like himself until his dying day, passed away a month ago. He belongs to a generation of great hunters whose women were eliminated by the genocide that has done away with his tribe. His dogs are his companions, and there are no material things here. Veridiano is the last living representative of the Watteau tribe, the last remaining being of this ethnic group that enters the third millennium with Parkinson's disease and no grandeur. That grandeur which his tribe had when the Pantanao had not yet been discovered by the pale-faced centaurs to the beat of the whip. We're leaving now. The cattle cannot wait, and neither can the wildlife that is scattered throughout this unknown country that is Brazil. Its legendary strength takes the place of those who believed they had dominated it throughout the different stages of history. The Indians have disappeared, and now the Pantanal and the cattle culture that it has begot will have to face as will all, the new challenges of the 21st century. We hope with all our hearts that they do so with good fortune. Our next program will once again drink from the mature Amazon, that which meets the sea, abandoning the South American continent to fill the rest of the world with sweet water. We will bid farewell to our program, checking a few of the ecological peculiarities that occur at its mouth, and remembering some of the more intense moments of our work in its jungles and its corners. we will discover that advanced prehistoric civilizations existed in the Amazon. And with this special program, we will pay a sincere tribute to the most impressive river in the world. Would you care to join us? We'll be waiting for you. See you then.